Terry Pluto, Cleveland Plain Dealer. Terry's seen it all. He's been there a long time, which means he's old, just like I am. And the uh, great columnist joins us now. Do you want to weigh in on the MVP conversation, Terry, before we get to the Browns quarterbacking situation? You know what? I'll go with Watt just because I saw him catch a touchdown pass and everything else. But uh, I like the Browns to have both of those guys. Then we wouldn't be talking Menzel and Hoyer. How's that? Uh, with the Browns. But I, Watt, is a, it's been phenomenal to see. And, you know, a lot of times you underrate a great player because of Rodgers just because he seems to be so terrific every year. But I've been just kind of fascinated by what they've been doing with Watt. But don't you think this is a Heisman campaign by the Texans with J.J. Watt? Of course. Okay, okay. How's that? Okay, that's fine. All right. That's why I went to the – sometimes we underrate a great player. Like, I remember one year it was a really dumb vote when Michael Jordan was there, and I just voted for Clyde Drexler just so he wouldn't vote for Michael Jordan. <laughs> I was just a stupid vote, and then, of course, he went out, and then that was the year they met Drexler in the finals, and he just annihilated him. I voted for Jordan every single year. And, and I just said, because I know he's going to win a championship. And yeah. I, I caught so much grief in Salt Lake City that uh, they published my vote, and I didn't vote for Carl Malone. And uh, I just said, look, Mike wins championships. That's the most value that you can have to a team. Of course, then you go to, you know, how do you divide Malone and Stockton? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, That was really the thing there where, you know, Malone needed Stockton, Stockton needed Malone, Michael I guess you could see Scotty Pippen would say he needed me, but I think Michael would probably have a different opinion. They should have given Scotty just Mike should give one of those MVPs to Scotty just yeah, to be nice. Right. Just to be nice. But um, all right. Uh, more okay. coverage in Cleveland, the Browns or the Cavaliers right now it's the Browns uh, because of the, the football stuff that came up when LeBron came back. That was, that's one of the bigger stories I've ever had here. And as you said, I've been around since like, you know, Ulysses S. Grant was born in Ohio. So, <laughs> Uh, that was just such a huge, huge story because of the uh, the homecoming, who he is, and and all that. But uh, when you look at like the number of hits on the internet and everything, uh, we get into Browns quarterbacks. There, you're getting into big <laughs> hits, and that's what people like to talk about. All right, I I was fine with Hoyer being named the starter this week. I didn't like the process of Hoyer being named starter this week. Where do you stand? Oh. I'm glad you said that because I wrote that, and it seemed like nobody else seemed to catch on to that, Dan, um, which shows we're both old or something. But Because uh, they just thought all was fine. They, they, it took them three days. Three days to do what? Yep. Uh, you know, basically, and this is one of the few times Mike Pett and I thought came across as a young coach where he has not for most of the year. You know, after the game, all you had to do is say, I know Johnny came in and got us a touchdown, but Brian's our quarterback next week. And that would have been taking care of that. Then Monday, he has another press conference, and we just hear more about agonizing over this decision. And then finally, Wednesday announce it. Well, you have a somewhat divided fan base anyway, and you know what's going to happen if Brian struggles in the first quarter. You're playing at home, and now you're dividing your home crowd. And uh, There would have been some of that to begin with, even if they just made the announcement right away. But you, you've kind of fueled that because, you know, you've left everything open. And I always think, like, kind of when you, when you leave the door open for Manziel, you might as well push him through. Well, I guess the only thing I was concerned about here is that Hoyer got you to seven wins. Yep. Out of respect to him and being in, in, a, in a, a pressure situation, he's at home, maybe the crowd is behind him, and you're, you're, you would have a better chance. I know what to expect out of Hoyer more than I do Manziel. We love what the potential and possibility right. is with Manziel. I just don't. I don't know if now is when you say to him, "It's your team the rest of the year." I think this. I think Hoyer is playing for his future in Cleveland coming up this weekend, and if it doesn't work out against the Colts, then I think it's Johnny Manziel's team, and Brian Hoyer lost the job. Well, that may have been it, but it, that, that, the easiest thing would have been just to get on last Sunday to just say, "Okay, Brian's starting next week," and in the back yeah. of your mind, you could have had all those other scenarios. I had an older NFL coach once tell me, "My quarterback is my guy." Until he's not my guy. <laughs> and he says, but as long as he's my guy, or no, as long as I know I'm playing him the upcoming week, I'm all, I'm all in. And then he goes, you know, it's real hard to date two quarterbacks at once. Did you want to see Manziel start as a columnist? As a columnist, yes. As a football guy, no. How's that? <laughs> because of the things you do. I wanted to, to let Brian finish it out, you know, uh, this, this game to see how he does. Um, but I really just I, – I didn't like the fact that uh, you're taking – and granted, uh, 
you know, Hoyer's a local guy, and I don't know him that well personally, but we have mutual friends, all that stuff. You know, his story is, is terrific. You know, undrafted out of Michigan State, cut by a bunch of teams, comes here. I mean, you got to realize, 7-5 and five is a, in Cleveland is like, you know, in Green Bay being like 11-2. and two. Yeah. yeah. After what we've been watching. Because remember, the last time they, they – They've they've never won more. They've only won more than seven games since 1999, twice. Yeah, and yeah. That, and the numbers there are nine and ten. I, I I'm going to leave you with this, and feel free yeah. to use this. This is the reason why I wouldn't have Johnny Manziel start on Sunday. Okay. Because he turns 22 on Saturday, he's going to be a no. Oh condition. my goodness! He, yeah, he's, actually, somebody said that to me. I go, the, the, that was probably the best day for him to turn 22 because they will keep him under lock and key. <laughs> well, just keep him out of the hotel lobby. Yeah. Well, I mean, on that one, he was. I uh, never mind. <laughs> oh no, no, we can talk about that. <laughs> no, it's just like with, that's the stuff with Johnny that makes me very tired, you know. And uh, at two in the morning, okay, you may have had dinner with your mom. Great. How long was dinner, and when did dinner start? And if it was mom in the lobby throwing haymakers, is what I no, wanted. no, it was it was it was the other things, and <laughs> I mean that's always the com- the Browns always say that the two in the morning, you know, yep. it's like the old Paul's so time is time, you know, four in the morning, and I'll just leave the rest of it go, but it's not particularly good. And you know, here's the thing about Menzel, I, I, what I have found when he's not in this whole party Johnny thing, when he's just like around. He is very uh, – I mean, he's, he's bright. He's, he's good with people and all that stuff. And when he's around the alcohol flowing, well, then you get something else. And I hope one day he re- wakes up and realizes that. Terry, enjoy the weekend. All right, Dan. Thank you, bud. Take That's, care. Uh, Terry Pluta, Cleveland Plain Dealer.